is just going to be a quick demonstration of how to use the tracing tool which is bundled in Fiji, Fiji being a package of ImageJ. I'm going to do this demonstration on Ubuntu, but all of this should work as well on Mac OS and Windows. There's one different key binding you'll find in Mac OS, but I'll talk about that a bit later. So now that Fiji has launched, I'm going to open an example image. This is one which hopefully is a fairly realistic example. Um, I've cropped it down a little bit, but um, as you can see here, there's, there's quite a bit of noise in this image and these uh, processes that we might want to pick out and analyze later are not as distinct as they might be. So to start the plugin, you can either go to the plugins menu, segmentation and simple neurite tracer, or if you want to avoid the menu structure, just press L to bring up the command finder, type tracer, enter, and that should launch the same plugin. Now the first two options we're presented with here are about how we're going to view the image stack during the actual tracing process. And uh, normally if I was using a larger screen I would have both of these turned on probably. The three pane view is uh, gives you um, a view through the stack through the other sides if you like. So produce a YZ plane, a window there, and an XZ plane there, but for screen real estate reasons I'm not going to use that in this demo. And the 3D viewer likewise I'm going to actually demonstrate in a later screencast, so I'll just turn them off for the moment. So now that this image has, uh, so that the interface has started up, we can see on the left here we have a variety of controls, and on the right, uh, the paths list, which is basically going to give us a summary of all the structures we've traced out so far. So um, I'm going to just draw your attention to this little box in the top left here, the instructions, which hopefully uh, should always prompt you um, for the next sensible thing to do. Or if you find it's, uh, you start some operation you want to abandon, the buttons below should always cancel what it's doing. But for the moment what I'm going to do is just click, as it suggests, somewhere to start a new path within the image. So for instance this cell body here. So after that first click we have a little blue marker that indicates the start of the path. And if I use the mouse scroll wheel to move through the stack, I can click on an extra point there. Once I've clicked on that extra point you can see this cyan cloud which shows the progress of the search trying to find a path between those two. And then with the path in blue we have the option to keep that segment of the path or to discard it. So in this case it looks pretty good so we'll probably keep it, but if you'd found that the automatic part of the tracing there had gone wrong or taken the wrong route, you'd click no and click another point which is closer to the start point. So I'll click yes and move on as the instructions suggest to pick another point. Basically we carry on doing this until you're happy with what you've got, at which point you would click on the complete path button here, and that would finish that path and add it to the path list. So I'm not going to go through this whole structure here because it's quite large, but I'll just add a couple more points. Give you an idea. Okay, so at this point in the paths window we don't have that path added yet. But if we select complete path, that will commit it in a sense, and it's added to the path list there as path zero. And you can see this is now highlighted in magenta in the image, or if you select it, the selected paths are shown in green. So one thing that might be occurring to you at this point is that um, although this is a real 3D path, no matter what slice we're on, we see the entire path as if it's projected through the entire image. Um, and this is helpful in, in some situations because it gives you a, a fairly good idea of how much you've done of the complete image. Uh, but if you want to, if it's getting confusing or you just want to see how closely it matches the paths, then changing this option from uh, projected through all slices to parts in nearby slices uh, should give you this alternative view where you can track through the path more obviously. Of course what we've created there is just an unbranched and uh, disconnected single path, but for real structures like this you quite often need to indicate, or it's in your interest to indicate, that there's some branching at one stage or another. So for instance this path appears to come off there. Now in order to indicate that, 
you have to select the path first so you know which path you're joining off from to create the branch and then hold down two modifier keys in this case both control and shift move along the path as you can see the red crosshair is now being constrained to follow that green path and just find the start point and click while still holding down control and shift and you should see that there's a slightly different start marker there with a green border to indicate that you're starting from a join and if we click further along this path that should fairly efficiently find a, a route between those two so you may notice that there's this uh, search is actually quite diffuse given what by eye we would see as being the neuron but we're going to talk about how to improve that just in a little bit once we finish this section so now that that's uh, finished click on yes to keep that let's move back to showing path projected through all the slices and if we complete the path we'll see that it appears in the path list in this uh, tree structure such that path 1 is a descendant of the original 1 path 0 and it indicates it starts in there as well so as well as uh, beginning on other paths you might want to uh, join up the end of one path onto an existing one so in order to do that I'll just demonstrate it with this extra cell body which seems to join on there again click somewhere to start the new path create a first bit there into that elbow kind of structure and then since our next search we're going to want to end on this existing neuron path zero again again select it hold down control and shift and find the point where you want to join up and while you're still holding down the modifiers click and now since you've indicated you want this to be the end of the path where it joins up clicking yes will complete the path automatically so in that situation you don't have to click click complete path separately so I should say that on Mac OS uh, the control key if you click with that brings up the context menu so instead of control and shift it's uh, the command key and shift that you should use for this now, as you can see um, or possibly guess uh, if you can start each path on any other path it's not necessarily a tree structure so this in a sense is an artificial ordering in this tree but hopefully generally a helpful one um, if you discover at a later stage that for instance this path 0 isn't the one you consider the primary path and say it's, it's path 1 uh, just click primary and that will readjust the path so the data is just the same but uh, this tree is rooted in a different neuron so if path 1 was considered to be primary then path 0 would branch off that and path 2 off that one again but for a moment let's just put that back now as I mentioned before you may have noticed the search um, through the image wasn't uh, keeping particularly closely to the neuronal structures there and that's because the by default the searches that the tracer does is based on intensity values without very much pre-processing and we can do rather better than that if we apply this Hessian based analysis pre-processing which uh, looks at the shape of the image as well um, at a particular scale but for in order for this to work efficiently you need to pick a couple of parameters fairly carefully here these are the sigma and the multiplier um, you can do this manually if you know exactly what you're doing there but it's probably more intuitive to use the option pick sigma visually so if I select that it asks you to click on a neuron in the image or basically a representative part which has some interesting structure in it so now I've clicked there you get this uh, palette being created so on the top left image there but basically this has taken this chunk of the image around where you clicked and it's generating pre-processing different versions of that image with different values of sigma it's a little bit low valued at the moment so if I just adjust that it makes it slightly brighter and hopefully you can see more easily what's going on now the sigma parameter in some senses controls the scale of the structures that you're looking for so for instance in the top left with a very low value for sigma that's probably too small because it's just picking out features on the the edge of the the tube structures we're looking for and likewise in this uh, very large value of sigma we're missing little bits of detail that we might be interested in or want to trace along so probably for this kind of image I would go for one of these two options as I click on that the green one shows what's selected and it's transferred to the interface there and before I try to make it a bit brighter so you've got a both a good range of contrast but uh, the things that you consider to be uh, 
proper uh, structures are picked out in bright white. For instance, uh, if you had it set to that, then that would be um, not productive because you would miss out on probably the finer structures there. So if we close that image there, and now that we've got our parameters, we then have to select this option, Hessian based analysis, in order to actually turn that on. Uh, so I often forget to do this, so probably in a later version we'll do that automatically if you uh, once you've closed the that Sigma palette. This takes a little while to process the image, it needs to do a Gaussian convolution of the whole thing, but once you've generated that once, then uh, if you don't change the value of sigma, you should just be able to turn it on and off without having this pre-computation happen again. So just while it's happening, I'll mention a couple of these other options here you can find in the interface. The used pre-processed image checkbox will probably be disabled for you, but if you look at the documentation on the web page, uh, that'll explain how if you give a file a particular file name, that'll be used as the values for searching instead of um, either the Hessian based analysis or the intensity values. So if you want to do some more complicated pre-processing then that's the way you do that. Uh, the fill list I haven't talked about yet but um, maybe the subject of a future tutorial that just gives you an easy way of uh, creating volumes around particular neurons. So if you want to for instance extract one particular neuron from a uh, rather messy image then you could do that using fills. Load labels essentially allows you to load an Amira, uh, an Amira mesh label file uh, such that you'll get in the status bar um, an indication of what the area that you're tracing into is called. So now that's finished, we're going to create another path just joining on from this existing one. So again, select path 0, hold down Control and Shift, go to the end and click to start there. Now hopefully if I click further along here, you should see that the search is keeping much more tightly to the kind of structures that we're interested in. So I'll select yes there. So although there's a little bit of pre-computation involved in creating that image in the first place, it should hopefully speed things up when you're tracing things at the later stage. And of course, if you find that a particular search seems to be taking too long for any particular reason, you can always just click abandon search and click somewhere a bit nearer to the starting point. Let's do that there. This should finish in a couple of seconds, hopefully. Yes, to keep that. Just complete that path. Add one more small structure there. I think path three is the right one. Just go to the end of this branch here as well. So while it's searching, you can always scroll through the image and see how uh, the pro search is progressing. So hopefully that gives you a fairly uh, quick idea of how to trace out paths within the image. Um, then the other thing that I wanted to just discuss here is about saving and loading the traces files. So what I'm going to do here is just save that. Oops, I've forgotten to complete the path, so I should do that first. So now we have five paths which are listed in this nice structure here. And we want to save that data maybe to come back and work on it later. So if you click Save Traces file here, the suggested file name is uh, replaces the extension of the image with dot traces there. So I'll click Save to save that. And it uh, warns me that I'm about to overwrite an existing traces file, but in that case it's one I just did for testing, so we can click on Replace. And just to show you how to load these back in, I'm going to close Fiji and start it up again. There's a, a slight subtlety here in that the traces file aren't just uh, standard image files, they're gzip compressed XML data. So uh, in order to view them um, or export the data in a different format, you need to load it into the Tracer plugin as we did before. So once Fiji has started up, we have to load in the same image. Again, start the Tracer plugin. And now if we select the Load Traces File option, that should spot that there is an existing file there which corresponds to the name of the original one. 
Yeah, we click on yes. And we can see we get back the original traces there. Now, if you want to do any kind of analysis and so on on this uh, kind of data, um, as I say, you can uncompress the traces files and uh, hopefully the structure in there should be fairly self-explanatory, but um, I'd be very interested to hear from anyone who has any particular requirements for analyzing that kind of data so that we can uh, supply something to do that automatically.